Hi there, can you join me today in Tackle and Bait's uh, Fishing Tackle Shop, um, which is based at Rookery Waters in Piddley, Cambridgeshire. Um, we're going to talk today about uh, the Angling Trust Winter League final coming up in uh, about a month's time, I would have said, um, on the Fenland drains. Um, first of all, we're going to talk about the shop. Um, we're not just an ordinary tackle shop on a commercial where you expect a few packets of hooks, a few bags of pellets um, and sort of that sort of thing. We're a proper fully scale tackle shop. Being a match angler, fishing the fens and growing up in the fens, you know, we stock some some pretty sort of niche items uh, specific for the drains as well. Uh, obviously we do your, your Guru, Drennan, Matrix, Preston, Colmic, um, other brands as well, you know, Census, um, plenty of, of the top brands we stock. Um, so first of all, we're gonna talk about the venues that are gonna be used this year and how they've changed, if they have changed, which a lot of them haven't changed this year. So we'll start off with March, which I think there'll be three full sections on there. Um, the first section again is going to be Wigston's back towards what I call Waterside or the Colyard Bridge. That'll be a very consistent section. The river's been full of fish this year again, uh, probably more fish than last year. Considering the weather, we've had no rain and it's been, you know, quite, it's been warm, which has helped. But um, if we get some rain, it'll fish really, really well for the final. And I hope we do get some rain. Um, consistent weights through there. I mean, if Wigston's on the grass, there's been some colossal weights, you know, over sort of 35 pound of roach in five hours. Um, sort of starting on the bread at, at four and one or five meters. Um, and then sort of moving on to a hemp line or a squat and pinky line, probably about 10 or 11 meters out. Um, all the way through there, you're probably looking to catch 16 pound for good points, I would have said, for the team. Um, there's, a, there's a little dodgy area which is called the Narras, which is just past the disabled platforms heading back towards the sort of the trees where about peg 10 is. That can be a bit iffy, um, but who knows? You never know, it could fish, fish really well with a bit of flow and a bit of colour. So B section again is sort of starting behind the swimming pool running onto sort of the allotment style. Um, there's been some big weights um, on hemp seed, mainly ground bait and pinky fishing through there. There's lots and lots of small perch in the river this year, which you can't really afford to miss out on. Um, there's an odd skimmer, you'll catch them short, either on bread or ground bait and pinky. Um, with it being so clear, there's quite a lot of fish sort of backing away from the pole line. You might catch on a small waggler, just chucking over in sort of the last hour or two, just nick a few last fish before the match ends. Um, if you draw a low number in B section, you're probably looking for 20 pounds, uh, depending on how much stick and hammer the, the drain gets and what the weather's like nearer the final. If it's fishing like it is now, you're gonna need 30 pounds to win that section. Um, the further you go down, more consistent 15, 16, 17, 18 pound weights. Um, there's, a, there's an odd worm fish through there, but you haven't got time to spend on worms. It's mainly an out and out ground bait and pinky attack. Two lines and just rotate your lines and then maybe a few fish on hemp late on if you've got a bit of a feature in your peg. The next section will probably be the fairest section of March. Um, seems to be the section that I draw the most. Um, I've sort of been on there three times this year and I've won my sort of five peg sections with 20 pounds. So the fishing is phenomenal really for, for the worst sort of uh, area of the river. Um, again, I normally start on a four plus one line feeding a nice sort of uh, lake or um, noir fine mature canal mix um, not not too sticky because you might catch a few skimmers four and one and then start loose feeding squats or pinkies depending on the flow and color um, that normally lasts for about an hour and a half two hours if you're lucky once you start getting perch and things like that on that line it's I normally start loose feeding my longer lines then um, and then I sort of switch to those rotate between the two every time you rotate lines you tend to catch a better stamp of fish um, again a little waggler can work if you've got a peg that sort of has got not something to hold the fish so less features a little waggler does work um, so that's that section really i would say 15 pound will get you mega points in that section um, moving on to the 20 foot well the 20 foot is 
it's one of those venues, it's 100 mile an hour, it's basically go hard or go home. If, if you haven't got the right bait with you, um, you know, in quantities, the anglers that have either side who will draw the fish off you. Um, Ray Malley recently won the Hayjet Winter League with 41 pound of roach. A few ounces behind Alan Donnelly had 41 pound. There was a 39 pound Steve Winters, and I think John Taylor had 38 pound. And that's normally the pegs sort of fall from the bridge are the ones to draw. But Ray actually had to wait half an hour for for the fish to turn up. And then when he he when they have done, he's done exceptionally well to catch better stamp fish. Um, rig wise on there, I tend to fish sort of a a three gram Colmic Jolly. Um, some people go heavier on fish fours and five grams even. Um, fishing sort of dead depth or just a bit over, double pinky or double maggot, big maggot on the hook. Feeding a uh, real sticky ground bait with as many pinkies as you can physically get in to the ground bait and just keep plopping it in and fishing it out. There's a few hemp fish but it's just too slow. It is just too slow. Um, I reckon you'll need 35 pound to win that section easily. Um, there's a lot of little rud. You can, if you draw to the right of the bridge, the pegs aren't quite as good. The first two are okay. The next sort of two will be lots of tiny small fish, which if you do draw there, I think it's, you'll be a bit unlucky. The problem is with the 20 foot, there's miles and miles of water where there's no fish. And then there's literally like 10 pegs where the, every fish in the river is sat. And you just have to be on them fish um, to do any good. So that's the 20 foot. Um, the other half of that section is Factory Bank. So Factory Bank is a little bit bigger than a ditch, basically, real real steep banks. Um, if we have a bit of rain between now and the final, we'll fish really well, a bit of colour in there. It's mainly squat fishing. Um, normally fish a line at uh, top three plus three, sort of slightly down your peg with ground baits, loose three squats in front of you and then a longer line when the fish back off the last sort of hour, two hours. Um, it, it's been a bit patchy so far this year. There's been sort of areas where there's a few roach and areas where there's lots of perch. Um, there is, it's, it's a bit more, not tricky fishing, but a bit more you have to think about it there. Smaller hooks, lighter rigs. Um, you know, it is, I really enjoy fishing Factory Bank because it is a rewarding venue, you know, it, you can, the difference between say 12 pound and 15 pound is just a little thing and and, and um, you're there the pegs nearest to town one two um, the colder it is the better they'll get if we have a bit of color sort of or a bit of rain the leading right up to the final the fish tend to spread right out all the way through and you can catch between you know 14 to say 20 pound on most pegs the crash barrier section has probably been I would say the most consistent area again this year. Um, why we don't know, it's a little bit narrower there, a bit more depth over. Um, but yeah, that, that'll, be, that'll be a nice fair little section. So that's four sections we've covered. The last section is at Benick. Um, Benick, uh, before Christmas, was fishing absolutely exceptional. You know, I've, they had a, the East Midlands Winter League on there and all the way through, even right up to Apeny Toll, you needed 12, 14 pound to win every section. I think Polly had 30 odd pound of roach um, in the town, sort of pegs five, six. We recently had a hayjack on there. The, the fishing was a little bit trickier than it normally is. I mean, still good fishing for the time of year. You know, Rob Hewison won a section with some tench um, from about peg 11 or 12. So it's always worth you know, um, having a shot worm line out of the way somewhere with, you know, dendras and casters and maggots mixed in. Um, the main fish in there, same again, two ground bait lines, uh, probably about nine, 10 meters. Rotate the lines, loose feeding squats or pinkies, whichever's best on the day. Um, there's, uh, the waggler has worked because we've had no rain, it has been clearer than normal. They've been catching on little wagglers, just flicking out past your 11 meter line, loose feeding squats. Um, you think it's it's sort of a slow way of fishing, but it's absolutely rapid. Once once you start catching, you know, you're in and out, in and out, and you've not got the pole over the top of the reds. Um, little London section has been the best so far. But I think by the time the Winter League final comes, the A section will be absolutely rigid again. Um, there's lots of little rud on a waggler there. 
and oh, two ground bait lines and fish quite positive bulk down rigs getting through the small fish to catch them better stamp fish um, so that's Benick really is pretty much the same as last year there's a few areas where you need to avoid and obviously areas which you'd love to draw um, but yeah no that'd be a, a nice little section um, so today um, we're going to fish the old Neen at March we're going to go about pegs one or two area we're going to do a bit of bread fishing um, we've, I've found this year that the pegs with a bit of room or the dolly old pegs which everyone knows about starting on bread has probably been the best way to catch them better stamp fish and then perhaps moving on to hemp but um, just because I've fished how I'm going to fish today doesn't mean that's the set rule for the, all of the venue at March March does change the higher the number the more ground bait and pinky fishing there will be um, so uh, yeah so hopefully you'll uh, learn something from today's outing. One of the the biggest questions I get asked or the most question asked is um, what bait, what ground bait, what quantities of bait for the venues for the up and coming Angling Trust Winter League final. Um, what I would suggest is if, if you do have any you know questions or anything come and see me at the tackle shop here. We're open from seven um, every day till five. We've got a cafe downstairs so any of the teams that are looking to come down a bit of practice a um, bit of information, you know, I'm more than happy to help. Come and see us and we'll sort that all out for you. Um, the first venue I'm going to start off with, with the bait is March. Um, obviously there's three sections at March, so, you know, three anglers in the team are probably going to want these quantities and similar sort of mixes. Um, start off with ground bait. So a mix that I really do love uh, is the Frenzy Match Black. It's quite an active mix, it's quite fine, um, and you can make it sticky. And I mix that 50-50 with the Canal Fine Mature. Um, always mix my mixes the night before, adding a bit of uh, Aura Mix to the water, just deadens it down. You know, sometimes if your mix is too active, you catch the wrong stamp fish in my eyes. I mean, um, ground bait is massive this year from probably from the sections B all the way and C are all ground bait really and pinky and squat fishing. Um, so that's the mix I go to. You can mix it sticky so it goes down quick if you want to try and trap the roach. If you've got a few skimmers in your peg, you make a nice soft ball, cut that in. Um, it's a real versatile mix so you can adjust it on the bank to what you want to do. So that's the ground bait out of the way. Moving on to bread punch. Um, this year at March, the bread hasn't been working as much as before, but still, the, if you look in the Angling Times or wherever, the, the leading weights are mainly on bread. Um, starting, I normally do a 50-50 mix, depending on the flow and colour. Uh, as you see in the, the video today, we're at March, explaining more about bread fishing. Um, this is just a, a white punch crumb, where well, it's just Alderson white crumb. Always mix your crumb the night before with an atomizer and a drill, really get some air into the mix. Probably four or five times you might have to go through it, add a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and then just riddle it off with a nice um, pinky riddle. Um, and then I'll take a bag of punch crumb and a bag of liquidized to my peg, and I adjust it accordingly to where I draw on the day and the flow, color, etc. Um, and always add gravel to that as well. <coughs> right, so that's the bread covered and ground bait. We're gonna move on to live baits. Um, these little beauties, squats, these will play a big part for good points from pretty much any section this year. Um, loose feeding or in ground bait, um, obviously this ground bait will do that, it will hold quite a lot of bait if you want it to. Um, I normally take three pints with me, uh, three to four pints depending on the area and sometimes you can be aggressive with the feeding, some days it's two or three at a time, you know, really you have to sort it out on the day and the flow, obviously. Um, pinkies, two to three pints is absolutely ample. Um, normally, I should probably come back with three quarters of these. Um, I like to put a few in my ground bait at the start. Um, sometimes loose feeding is can produce a better stamp fish than the squats. Just a few target bait, a few maggots. You might want to um, fish a chop worm line in certain areas. They're good to add to your uh, chop worm line. And then obviously you've got casters and your worms as well. Half kilos, absolutely plenty for all the drains. Um, 
last thing is hemp. I normally take two or three pints of hemp with me. Um, uh, I don't, I haven't been loose feeding much hemp this year, but I tend to put it in on my cross line in pots. And then when the fish sort of back off, if you do catch on the hemp, I start to loose feed it with a catapult. And that's about it really on the bait for March. Keep it simple. Um, just because you've got all this bait with you doesn't mean you've got to feed it. Some days you'll feed it and some days you won't. Um, so yeah, that's it really on March. So moving on to the 20 foot now. Um, your bait bill is a little bit more expensive than at March. Um, I'm going to start with ground bait mixes. Um, this is a key thing on the 20 foot because you need a ground bait that's going to be sticky enough to hold lots of these, lots of pinkies. Um, I've experimented with a few different mixes. Um, always mix it the night before. I've had a lot of faith in this. Just riddle it off so all the bigger particles are, um, are free. It's great value for money. Um, I add a three kilo bag of that, which is the Bolan Roach Black, mixed with Turbo. You can't beat Turbo. It's um, fantastic ground bait. Really is a good binder. And then if I really want it extra sticky, I just add some PV1. Um, that just really helps it bind. You know, you don't want to be keep squeezing and stuff like that. It's one squeeze, plop, straight in. Um, so I mix that the night before. Probably six kilos of ground bait I'll take with me there. Um, so what I suggest for the team is, is, is one angler mix up six kilos and then someone, whoever did draw the 20 foot, is give them that sort of bulk of ground bait just to keep the cost down rather than everyone mix up six kilos. So that's the ground bait. There's that one. Right, pinkies. Obviously it says you need plenty of pinkies. I've got probably four or five pints I'll take with me. Um, some people take dead pinkies. Um, I like to take lives. Um, mainly fluoros for feeding, but I like to fish a, a uh, bronze or disco pinky on the hook just because the dye I think just toughens the skins up. You can catch more fish without having to rebate, which you know, when you've got to catch three, 400 fish, that makes a big difference. Um, so that's pinkies, move that out of the way. Hook baits, big maggots, big bronze maggot. Um, not really feeding many maggots. Um, double maggot or double bronze maggot, double red maggot can produce the better stamp fish. So those, those. Hemp, I do like to add a bit of hemp to my ground bait. Um, just gives it, you know, a bit of weight as well. Um, Holds a few better stamp fish in your peg. It's not a be all and end all the hemp, but I do like to feed quite a bit of hemp on there. And then moving on, if you do draw the pegs uh, away from the bridge, you might be waiting for fish to turn up, or you might be on the M peg nearest towards Hobbs Lot. Sometimes, if the weather is warm, there could be some really big tench caught there. You could, you know, you could catch 40, 50 pound of them, depending on the weather. So, half kilo of worms, a few dead maggots and some casters. And that is pretty much as all the bait you're gonna need. I know it sounds and looks a bit uh, daunting seeing all the amount of ground bait and things like that. If you was expecting to catch 200 pound on a commercial, you'd have to pay you know, a gallon of casters or you have to put the bait in to catch fish. And it's the same on the 20 foot. If you don't put the bait in, you don't catch the fish. The anglers around you will draw the fish off you. So uh, on the 20 foot, go hard or go home. And that's it. So you join me today on the Old River Neen at March in Cambridgeshire. Um, probably, without doubt, the uh, best winter venue in the country. Um, we're in the low number section. Um, Wigston's is to my uh, left, and this is peg one. So this will be the first peg in the uh, Angling Trust Winter League final in a couple of weeks' time. Um, so today we're going to talk about the rigs I use. Uh, the setup, making sure everything is around you, comfortable to hand. You know, you don't want to be getting off your box, up the bank, trying to find things. It all needs to be in the right places to be as efficient as possible. Um, so we'll start off with the setup. Obviously, when you're in the fens, you need a decent platform. Um, there's so many available now. I use a custom-made one by uh, Alan Lockwood. Um, really great platform, solid, sturdy. Um, as you can see, the bank behind me, you know, you need to be in the water to find the right depth on your short line. So, um, platforms are a must. 
The second thing is side trays. If you if you was fishing in an island, you'd have everything to hand. You don't want to get off your box, get up the bank. You're spooking fish because you're only fishing short, and um, you know little things like that can make a big difference at the end. Um, I'm going to be fishing bread today. This is a an MPEG, so this year the the river hasn't been predominantly bread, but it's it's um, the better pegs with a bit of room here um, near Wigston's on the grass there, like the culvert. That's a really good area for bread fishing and behind the swimming pool. Um, any pegs with a bit of room really and I normally start on bread. Um, obviously we've got a boat today which is a massive bonus if you're fishing at March. You've got a feature for the fish to back up off to later on and hopefully we'll catch some, some nice hemp roach later on as well. So um, we'll start with the top kits. We're fishing four and one today, which is a method which they use a lot in the in the fens. It's super efficient and fast. Um, I've set up two rigs for this line. I've gone for my positive bulk down rig. Um, normally on the bread at March, it's it's you know the bulk's been right down, really positive, short hook lengths. This year there's the, quite a lot of fish are coming up in the water, and then better fish are feeding. So I've gone for a two dropper rig today. Sometimes I have a one dropper rig. But that's a, a 0.8 because it's, although it looks like it's flowing, it's not today. There's a, there's a, a horrible skim on the water. So I've got a back shot just above that. Uh, so I can hold on to that and it just fishes a bit better. So that's the rig I normally start on, which I start at dead depth, see what happens. Um, and then I just keep moving the float up and down till I find the right stamp of fish. I mean, sometimes, if there's a few skimmers about, you'll, you know, you can move your float probably six inches off the bottom um, to catch these. Um, we haven't caught any yet, but hopefully we will do at some point. So that's that rig. That's the, the money making rig, as they say. Then this rig is a 0.6 of a gram float. It's a little bit thicker bristle, not too bad. You've got a bulk and then we've got three droppers. Obviously I can move that down, up and down, depending on how I feel on the day. And uh, this again is set at dead depth, slightly smaller hook. It's an 08, a 20 uh, Hayabusa 128 standard nickel, not black nickel. So that's that one. And then sometimes when the wind is really awkward and the, the bread line's just dying, I just fish a, a straightforward top three these are all five Preston uh, original slip through top two of a Daiwa kit. And that's a 0 0.6, it's a nice cane bristle so you can use a bigger uh, bit of bread like six mil and it's not gonna be dragging under. And that's a, a simple little bulk and one dropper. And uh, with that I'll just be lowering it in right over my bait, dropping it in, hopefully getting bites straight away and catching them better stamp fish. But normally, the sort of after an hour and a half, last two hours of the match, you'll probably be fishing that one. So that's the bread fishing. Punch, hook punches wise. I normally start on five mil, um, go up to six mil if I think there's a few better stamp fish there and go down to even a three mil as, as the session goes on. Um, sometimes a smaller bit of bread means bigger fish. When you're on the drains, I mean, You've got to be looking for 300 fish, whether you draw here, anywhere, all the way through March. Um, the difference between catching 25 pound and say 14, 15 pound is all about the stamp of fish. You know, this area here is good, so I'm going to fish bread and hopefully catch a better stamp like two, three ounce roach and look on the hemp later and catch some maybe half a pound. Um, as you move through past Wigston's, again, you can catch a few on bread, but normally from the health centre bridge up to the bypass I mean it's fishing really well um, but the weights aren't roach they're mainly small perch and small roach odd skimmers and I probably wouldn't fish bread there to start off with I'd, I'd fish ground bait line nice soft ground bait um, probably some frenzy match black and noir or some people use lake you know a real real active mix normally it's getting on the four plus one line um, start loose feeding squats on that I personally do some loose feed pinkies and then fish two lines probably about 10 meters and um, the, you're looking for 
on a diver kit you've got your number three section you plumb up well just take your float up to probably four inches away from the join and I just ship out and I mark on my pole exactly where I find that depth um, some pegs it'll be further over some pegs will be a lot shorter um, but what you need is you need an area in your peg for later on in the match when you lose feeding for the fish to back off across and you can carry on catching them if you go over too early you're pushing the fish out of your peg um, to another angle or they sit between you and the next angler so for me that that is the magic depth to look for for your ground bait and pinky fishing again same ground bait mixes um, I tend to lose feed over one and um, not on the other and just see which is best on the day sometimes you'll find just potting in ground bait in, and fishing it out and fishing double pinky or single pinky on the hook I mean you can feed two three pints of squats some days and then another day you only need to feed half a pint you have to just sort it out depending on flow on the day um, again hemp it depends if I've got a feature I'm more than comfortable of, of probably just feeding a pot of hemp and seeing seeing how that goes but it all depends on the peg and the area you're in and what flow you've got I mean today it's flowing just about it looks faster than it is um, so that's it really so um, I'll move on to my hemp line today um, I tend to put a 250 mil pot of hemp at the start um, with a few pinkies just a few um, bronze and fluoro pinkies mixed in just as a, a change bait over the top and I'll ship out to probably about four inches shallow on the depth I described earlier just put two potfuls of hemp and just leave it I found on here the more you uh, dink a bit of hemp over it the smaller the fish are so when I go on it normally you'll catch straight away might get two or three fish if it starts to slow just come straight off it um, sometimes they're not that much bigger than your pinky and squat and bread fishing so it's not really a must to catch on the hemp it can be a bit too slow and you get preoccupied and before you know it you uh, you're behind um, so rig wise I've got a five uh, five or four elastic through three so it's nice and soft because it is quite clear today you don't want to be the fish splashing on the surface and spooking the rest of the shoal so I've got a 0.1 census basey with a little back shot there and I've got number seven styles nicely strung out and an 08 to a size 19 Hayabusa nickel hook so it's it's not a small hook you know if they're going on the hemp they're not really worried about hook size and the key thing is is don't having too short a line between your float and your pole tip um, when it is sunny and clear you know you can be spooking a few fish away out of your peg um, so that's that line I'll go on to my uh, squat rigs or pinky rigs I tend to have a selection set up I use the the Colmix centers from 416 down to a 410s um, the 416 I shot with a little bulk and then uh, six styles underneath there and a five inch hook length and a 20 hook um, what I will say is you want real sharp hooks on here because you're catching lots of fish and if you're at the allotments through there there's a hell of a lot of perch and they do tend to blunt your hook so make sure you strike hard, hard as well to set the hook if there's a few of them about so I'd probably set up, I mean we're not at the allotments today so I've not set those up but a 412 rig slightly strung out and then a 410s rig for fishing right high up in the water for like the last hour when you think there's no fish in your peg you fish half depth from the fish a nice st stamped little roach so these are the rigs I'll be using there uh, hopefully catch a few fish there's a few fish topping as well which you don't normally see at March right so today there's a little bit of flow um, not too much flow so the bread mix I've gone for is 70% uh, liquidized to 30% punch crumb now a lot of people say well you know what's the point of mixing the two and stuff like that and why would you use more punch crumb than liquidized so I've obviously got a bit of gravel in there as well just to get it down but when the river's got a bit more colour and it's a bit more pacey I tend to opt for a higher percentage of uh, punch crumb just because it's heavier it sits on the bottom it's a little bit stickier so you've got less cloud today obviously there's less flow there's a few skimmers about so I'm going to feed it a little bit softer although it's still got the gravel in it will go down and break probably that far off the bottom 
um, create a, probably a, an area this big. Sometimes when it's flowing, you're squeezing hard little balls right on top of your float to catch better stamp fish. But today I think it will be um, probably just start the match with a ball like that. Probably a little bit, well, nice sized ball. And I've opted to fish in the deepest part of my peg, which is four and one. So we're just going to put that in. The other thing with March is when you put your bread in, people put it straight in front of them. And you know, seems about right putting it about there. But what happens, because there's so many fish competing, they'll come and sit above your bait. So I like to put mine probably at about three or four o'clock position here. So I'm just gonna cut that in. You see the punch come go straight down, but it'll be breaking up off the bottom about now. So that way, sometimes then better stamp fish will sit right above your bait which is always a good thing if that happens, you're normally on for a few fish. So now I'm gonna feed my hemp line. This is a last hour line, just a few pinkies in there. Find the swan. And I've marked on my pole, a bit of tip hex, exactly the depth where I need to be, which is there. And instead of just cupping it straight in, I'm gonna spread it out a bit, just so there's a bit of an area for the fish to graze on. So that's that. Right. Starting rig-wise, start on my positive rig, bulk down, um, see what's about, which is this one here. So I'm going to start on that and the 5mm bread punch as well. The key thing when you're on the drains is being efficient, um, you know, and smooth. You can be too fast sometimes and get in tangles and things like that. So this is the 4 and one method. Just going to flick that out there. Take the short four off there. Right, so we're gonna lower it in, straight down over that bread that I just put in. Now I'm gonna hold tight against the back shot. Hopefully uh, catch one straight away. Lower it straight down right over my bait. Normally after sort of five or ten minutes, you get a good indication of what sort of, there's a lift bite straight away there. And we straight your hand, I haven't took a section off there, and it's a nice little rud, which is a good sign. I've just shipped it slightly behind, with the elastic through free, it just cushions it, it comes straight to hand. I haven't took no sections off. I'm going to straight back in again. Push that in. Straight in again. So I've, as I've flicked the rig out, I've shipped the section through, load it in, and in control of your rig again. Punch in your bread out, ready for the next fish. To a lot of anglers that don't fish the fens, catching 300 feet fish seems a bit scary. Um, I mean, round here, we've, there's lots of ways of, of catching 300 fish, but you have to be efficient, um, smooth, obviously having the kit around you. So today on this four and one method, I'm not taking a section off. It's like sort of as fa faster than whip fishing, I would have say. You're in control of your rig, you're lowering it in. You're, sh you're basically whip fishing, but short lining at the same time. So you're getting the presentation to catch the better stamp fish. And it's as fast, if not faster than a whip. You know, if you miss a bite, you straight in control of your rig again, lowering it back in, boom, there's another fish on. So I've got a five through a top two or top three of a Daiwa pole, um, and I've got one section on. So that way I don't have to sh break, take a section off. It's just smooth, straight to hand, and nice and efficient. Punching the bread out, ready for the next go. Um, 
Hopefully we'll get a bite here. No. I mean, if you did hook a better fish, you know, a little pommy there. So straight in, bread punch, already done. So flicking the rig out in one sort of motion, lowering the rig in nice and steady, holding it, holding against the float, obviously because of the skim today. Pre-baiting up. A little bite on the drop there. Again, lowering it in. Right over your bait. Can't get any more accurate than that. Again, look, don't need to take a section off. Mr. Bite. When you've got to catch 300 fish, a little thing like that makes a big difference. You know, the more time in the water, the more bites you're going to get, the more fish you're going to get. Straight to hand, unhooked it, bridge punch, already done, straight back out again. Punch your bread, hold the line tight to the float. Normally, when the skim's not too bad and it's flowing, you just with bread fishing, I just let the the float run with the pace but today it's really awkward with this skim oh there's a better one so it's a better fish now just gonna swing it straight to hand I mean this method don't just work here I mean it can work in island when you can fish short tamar you know you can put massive weights together um, it's just really efficient So it's all the benefits of short lining, but super fast. So what I do is, when you're bagging, it's you, you, you sort of, you want to, you start missing bites and things and you're running out of bread and to force me to uh, change my bread, I cut each slice of bread into four. That way I use it up quicker and I'm forced into changing it. Obviously with the wind and, and the weather, it dries out quick. Um, nice stamp roach there. So when I get to sort of that many in a slice, just get rid of that, keep them all at hand. Nice quarter out. There's two things I do. This is just straight out of the packet, just cut in. And then sometimes what I'll do is a different stamp of presentation. I'll just sit on the bread just for a second. And that gives me two different options. Sometimes the nice fresh from the thing is better for them stamp of fish. And then sometimes a nice flat bit of bread works best. Um, what I tend to do with my bread is in the morning, take it out of the packet, cut it in fours, and then um, put it in the microwave for about 10 seconds, that's all, no more. Then put it in a nice sealed bag with the rest of it and the moisture stays in. And that just keeps it nice and tacky then. I mean, some people put it in the freezer the night before and then microwave it, but I don't think it makes that much difference. I mean, um, the favored bread that people use for hook bait is the Warburton's uh, medium sliced bread um, which to be honest that's, I've found that as well look at that look. change of bread better stamp fish straight away so my bread line's dying off now and I think 
I'm, I'm really looking forward to going on the hemp line because I know it's going to be solid. I've fed it with probably 30 grains of hemp every, I don't know, eight, 10 minutes, not too much. I've found if you feed too regularly, the stamp of the fish on the hemp do go down. Um, so I've obviously fed a pot full of hemp and a few pinkies at the start. This rig's set probably about inch off bottom. Um, obviously finding good hemp is critical this nowadays as well. There seems to be a lot of small stuff on the market. Um, so having a shop about and finding some good stuff is critical. Um, some people fish tears and things. So that's a nice point one rig, strung out. I'm going to lay this rig in, away from me, and then hold it so all the shot falls into place. And I'm only going to feed when I think the fish have backed off or the fish go small. Um, so we just laid that in there. Flick it back in again. Hold it tight again. That little back shot on there is, is massive. Hold it nice and tight. There we go, straight in, straight back, not massive fish, normally you like a, a bit bigger fish, I mean there's lots of ways of hooking the hemp as well, I, uh, some people use a little bit of elastic and things but I'm a fan of just pushing it in and making sure the point's showing every time so we've had a chuck on it and we had one first chuck in the lesser areas you probably go in and get a bite straight away but it's the second third fourth chucks that's when you make a decision whether the fish are any bigger than the bread fish another one there look. Um, whether you stay on it come off it you know nice stamp fish that top lip that's a couple of fish you know when it's right because it just goes in just like it is now you can't fail sometimes in the lesser areas you've got to make a decision whether you um, you know, you can always turn this hemp line into a, another squat line. Um, it's not doing any harm. That's why a lot of anglers in the fens do feed the hemp because you can always have an alternative. Stamp fish. If you noticed, I'm, I've got a top three rig there, but I'm swinging in on a top four and everything's to hand then, you know. I mean, I do use puller bungs. A lot of anglers don't. I mean, I'm using more just to tighten up the elastic if I need to when I'm fishing. There's another one, look at that. A bit better fish, that one, I think. That's better. They're the stamp you want. Probably four or five ounce fish. Proper little chunky weight builders. So again, just pushing the grain in. The reason why I don't pin my hemp and stuff like that, I find when you pin it, sometimes you miss bites and, and you look, bump fish off because the hemp's still masking, you know, still on the hook. And um, I'm not a fan of that. I think what, if you, so get your rig right, there's all that on the drop, look, straight away, you can't get much faster than that. Um, you hit every single bite, that one's come off, look. There's me going on about, you don't bump fish. What I tend to do when I cook my emp, when you, uh, just before, sort of, 10 minutes before you think it's sort of done, I just take some out, 
just so they're a little bit not undercooked but they're not as well cooked as you have a hemp just uh, stays on the hook a bit better so lay the rig in to the left lay that in there so everything's on a tight line to so see every little indication on your float again there's no point striking at little dibs and dobs wait for the float to go under properly because it's a long way so i missed the bite there just lay it back in again most of your bites on the hemp come as it's falling not very often is do you you sort of rig run through and you sort of it waits up and wants to run through your peg it's normally on the drop there you are one on straight away So I'm just getting the grain of hemp, one that's not too split, just open it up slightly, push the hook in towards there, towards where it joins the pod and away we go. Lay the rig in, hold it as tight as we can. As you can see, the fish on the Emperor a lot better stamp. Just proves that it's worth staying on it. You know, when you're catching a four or five ounce fish every chuck, someone's got to uh, be catching a, a bigger stamp fish, really, to be here. Yeah. So. Just proves that the Emp's worth fishing. Hope you enjoyed the video. I think we've covered most bases with bait and rigs and stuff like that. Um, if there is any information you need about the drains or any products you need, just come and see me, and um, we'll, you know we're more than happy to help you out. Uh, whether it be directions, you know, anything you can think of, just give me a drop me a line, and um, we'll be your hand.